aftershocks. What you're seeing here is how those aftershocks happened over a period of about a week after the main shock. And that orange region, delineated by those orange dots, uh, essentially gives you a feeling for the uh, area of the fault uh, along the plate boundary that ruptured in this event. Every aftershock takes its toll on an already frightened population. Journalist Callum McRae has been moved by the plight of the people here. In the regional capital of Sendai, the temporary shelters are full. But in a darkened, ravaged city, it seems one person at least is trying to cling to normality. We're in Sendai, three or four hundred metres from the shorefront, in a, in a scene of apocalyptic chaos. Uh, it's cold, it's dark, there's no power anywhere. And yet, up there, in that abandoned block of flats, on the top floor, there's one light, one man, one family, perhaps, trying to survive in, in this chaos. The following day on the road back to Tokyo. The arterial road that connects the north and south is empty. A reminder of the damage this disaster has done and is still doing. one of the worst nuclear accidents in history if it stops right now. And we're dealing with multiple meltdown possibilities. Two radioactive substances, cesium and iodine, were detected near the number one reactor at the plant on Saturday. The um, Fukushima uh, nuclear base is about 60 kilometers that way. That's about 38 miles or so, I think. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we've got the windows closed. We're driving fast. Um, who knows whether it's safe? Uh, the advice is very conflicting. The American government says that uh, uh, has put an exclusion zone of 80 kilometers. Uh, and of course, we're well within that. On the other hand, the Japanese government say it's fine as long as it's more than 30 kilometers away. So, I mean, you can tell, nobody knows. Um, but uh, we'll keep the windows closed and uh, I'll put on a mask. Mask. Looks good, huh? The danger posed by the Fukushima nuclear plant remains unresolved. Meanwhile, scientists have started to analyze the startling number of aftershocks that are still rattling Japan. That main shock was followed by hundreds of magnitude fives and dozens of magnitude six earthquakes and a handful of magnitude sevens. Once you had a, a, a pattern of a, an earthquake happening, followed by a bigger one, you never know whether it's going to happen again. Japan's earthquake warning systems did and will save lives. The Hawaii tsunami warning system also saved thousands. As the tsunami crossed the ocean, the warning center monitored it all the way. Here it is here. Ah. We couldn't um let our guard down because, of course, the tsunami has continued on and we have a, we have a continuing responsibility to the rest of the Pacific. Even though the tsunami lost most of its energy as it crossed the ocean, the scientists had been able to warn the world. As the tsunami spread across the ocean, at location after location, we realized, oh, the, our predictions are pretty darn good. Because people were warned, there was very little destruction or damage, certainly to human life. One person did lose their life, their life uh, in, in California, north of Crescent Bay, because they rushed down to the beach to take photos of the tsunamis that came in. In Japan, the humanitarian disaster continues. Estimates put the death toll from the quake and tsunami at over 20,000. Rebuilding will take generations. 
For scientists, the analysis continues. From all the data they have acquired, one threat is still very clear. Experts have warned of a large quake and tsunami off the coast near Tokyo for years. The fault lines under the ocean to the south of Tokyo are dangerously stressed. But this time, the earthquake happened in the north. What's been expected is slip of the Philippine plate relative to the north, of, uh, the Eurasian plate. Um, and what has actually occurred is slip of the Pacific plate relative to the uh, Eurasian plate. Sometimes a great earthquake will cause the next patch of the plate boundary to slip. So all eyes are on on what's happening, how this earthquake has stressed the neighboring part of the, the plate boundary. You've got to understand this, this whole region is in a, a very high state of stress and it's ready to go. And, and they've been expected to go any minute. So this recent earthquake is going to have brought that closer. Uh, the question is how much closer? When an earthquake like this happens, it, it basically, all of the stress that it relieves in the Earth's crust essentially gets transferred somewhere else. It doesn't go away. It actually adds loading to other parts of the crust. The densest areas of population survived largely unscathed. Next time could be different. One area of extreme concern is Tokyo, the world's largest city. There could be a, a major event in Tokyo that would be extremely damaging to this very densely populated region. If you were gonna choose somewhere to put one of the, the major industrial economies on the planet, that part of the Pacific Rim is not the place you would choose. It could be happening as we speak, or it might not happen for a decade. The critical thing is, has this particular earthquake shaken that region up so that it brings forward the, the timing of that earthquake? It's foolish to think that we can stop natural phenomena. What we've got to do is to learn to live with them and minimize the consequences when they happen and minimize also the recovery time. It's very difficult for science to protect against earthquakes and tsunamis. What science can do is help town planners, engineers to make buildings stronger, to make designs of buildings and cities more resilient. We cannot stop these things happening. We can't prevent it we can prepare for it.